What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City transfer update. We are running daily Manchester City transfer updates throughout all of the January winter window. So make sure like always if you're enjoying the content, then make sure you subscribe, press that red button, press the bell and put your push notifications on. We're aiming for 5,500 subscribers. At the time of recording, we're now around 68 subscribers away. So any help towards hitting that goal would be much appreciated. Go get it, football video. No? I'll get my coat. <laughs> you can find my social media links in the description below and popping up on screen too. If you want to go and follow me on Twitter and Instagram, I'll keep you up to date with everything happening with the latest Manchester City news, JSGC news, and the latest transfer news too, retweeting sources too. So, worthwhile following me on there. You can find my email in the description below if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So, we're going to crack on with this video and we're going to be speaking about the ins first and it comes in the form of a young player called Cameron Gabadibo. Gabadibo, is that how you say his name? I don't know what it is. If it is, it's a fun name to say. But Manchester City have signed Cameron Gabadibo. Gabadibo. That is a proper tongue twister. Awesome name though. From Leicester City. 17 year old centre back. Um, apparently he's been on trial at the Etihad Stadium and he's now signed for Manchester City according to the Telegraph. So if that is true, then Manchester City clearly impressed with the young player that he's been brought into City. So City will have to pay compensation to Leicester City. But wish him all the best at Manchester City and looking forward to seeing him in a City shirt and following him in the academy and seeing how he gets along. So welcome Cameron. Good luck at Manchester City. Looking forward to seeing more of him. Now, the Telegraph have also been reporting that Manchester City are trying to sign another young player. It comes in the form of Ivan or Ivan um, Maranti from uh, Villarreal. A very highly regarded young player over in Spain. Now, Manchester City and Barcelona are both chasing his signature. He is the Spain under-19 captain and he also plays in midfield. Highly regarded player with Manchester City and Barcelona after him. He is obviously going to be a really good level-headed player. Now, he currently plays for Villarreal B, um, and at the moment he's rated at around £6 million, according to sources in Spain. It's one for us to keep an eye on. This reminds me a little bit of the Eric Garcia transfer when we first brought him in from Barcelona. That took a couple of months to be able to get done. He was, at the time, I think, was he the Spain under-19 captain too? Possibly, was he the under-18s or under-17s? He was one of the Spain's um, youth team's captains, though. But real level-headed player, really mature for his age. Uh, and I imagine the same is going to be for Ivan Moranti. So uh, a really interesting one to keep an eye out for. Because these players from the Spanish academies, um, they're raised and live and breed the style of uh, football that Pep Guardiola just loves, the tiki-taka football. Um, playing in midfield too, this is a really interesting transfer. So I'm going to keep my eye on this because uh, if he does sign for City, then that will be a huge coup for us. So I'm just going to keep my eyes peeled on this one because it is really interesting. Now... Moving on to one of the big stories of the day. Comes in the form of uh, Kaladu Koulibaly. Now, sources in Spain are saying that he is being lined up to be signed for Real Madrid. This source has been backed up from the Manchester Evening News, who are saying that Manchester City now are officially, according to them anyway, out of the race to sign Koulibaly. And Manchester City are no longer interested in bringing Kaladu Koulibaly to the Etihad Stadium. Now, first and foremost, I would love to know your thoughts of this in the comments below. I know that this would be an expensive transfer to get done for Manchester City, which is one thing that makes the transfer extremely difficult for us. That's not even taking into account how difficult Napoli can be to negotiate with. We know this already from the Jorginho transfer, that it is very difficult to be able to negotiate with Napoli. We didn't like how Napoli composed themselves, or the chiefs should, uh, at Napoli, should I say, the people in charge. We didn't like how Napoli conducted that transfer, and City won't be in any rush to go and negotiate with Napoli. So, that might be one of the reasons that's putting City off. Uh, I'm going to be positive here and think that City actually are lining up alternative replacements. Is that going to come in the form of another def highly regarded defender like Mila uh, Milan Skriniar? I do not know. Have we got somebody else lined up like we spoke about yesterday? Possibly bringing in a homegrown defender like Nathan Ake. I do not know. But if this source is true, um, 
and I'm not too sure if it is or not, but if it is, then City are going to find it very difficult uh, to, to bring in a, a central defender because it seems that they're not going to be paying high high prices for, for defenders. So, yeah, I'd, I'd love to know your thoughts of this in the comments below. Uh, like I said, I don't know how true it is. Kalidou Koulibaly might be the age putting him off that he's going to be 29 in the summer, that City might not feel that they're going to get their money's worth out of how old he is. I do not know. It's interesting. And like I said, I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, we've already had a little bit of humour on this channel. Just to start with at the start of this video, we're going to have a little bit more. Comes in the form of uh, a source from the Daily Star. Yeah. Uh, but they've said that um, Jose Mourinho, he's interested in bringing Zhao Cancelo on loan until the end of the season to Tottenham Hotspur. Now, I broke down this transfer. I don't understand why we'd let Cancelo leave when we've only just brought him in in the summer. Now, he was never going to displace Kyle Walker, and Kyle Walker was all of a sudden going to become the rotated option at Manchester City. That was never going to happen. It will take 18 months minimum. I'd say anything from one and a half to two and a half, maybe even three seasons to be able to break down and make a spot his own. So Jao Cancelo has to fight and earn his place as Manchester City's number one right back choice. Now if City uh, are going to be playing more with a three at the back system, then a right wing back would suit Jao Cancelo like a glove fits a hand because it's a position that he is used to filling. Something more than what he has got over Kyle Walker. Now, no offence to Spurs, but would you rather be Manchester City's starting right back under Pep Guardiola and winning trophies? No offence to Spurs fans, but that, that's what City do stride to do. Or would you rather be starting at right back under Jose Mourinho? Now, let's not forget that Jao Cancelo is a very offensive player. He likes to go forward. Jose Mourinho's style of football isn't to go forward all that often. So, this transfer doesn't make sense. And it just stinks of, well, being false, basically. I broke down this transfer even further. What message does this send out if we sign players, then loan them out at the next window when they've been registered as a first team player? It's going to put other players off joining the club. And so it's just not apprehendable that this transfer could be done. And lastly, if we was going to let Zhao Cancelo leave and City all of a sudden don't rate him or he's not what they wanted, which does happen with transfers, why would we loan him out? Because if, if we was to do that, we're then banking on him being a success, okay, at Tottenham Hotspur to get his value up. Whereas his value will be roughly at around what City already paid so we could get our money back. I just don't understand this transfer. I'd like to know your thoughts of it, though, in the comments below, just like with the Koulibaly transfer. It baffles me. Now, we've got an Ian Pervader update, just a short update this time, which uh, I'm sure some some people might be quite thankful of. Now, Bielsa has contacted Pervader to try and convince him to join Leeds United. We know that Torino and Palmer remain keen on bringing him in, but we've got a new name. Comes in the form of Celtic from the SPFL. Now, apparently Manchester City have offered Celtic uh, Ian Pervader on a permanent transfer and City are confident if he does go to Celta that they can have a low buyback clause to be able to bring him back so it does seem that City are striding towards trying to get a permanent transfer for this month with a buyback clause of course if Perveda leaves on a free contract we're not going to get much of a say on having a buyback clause or first dibs should Perveda have an extremely good few seasons at wherever he ends up now, Manchester City have a good working relationship with Celtic. Obviously, we've seen other players head there and have very successful loan spells, including Patrick Roberts. So, we have a good working relationship with Celtic, and it would make sense for this to happen. But, will he go there? I'd say that uh, his most likely destination would be Leeds. Whether it will be loan and then a free transfer, or whether it will be a permanent transfer this month remains to be seen. But I, I reckon Ian Pervader will end up at, at Leeds, eventually, is just my um, instinct on this transfer. But... More than anything, I'm sure that Ian Perveda is a wonderful, great quality young player. Wherever he ends up, will have a outstanding career and have a, an outstanding few seasons, or many seasons, I do not know, wherever he ends up. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye on where he ends up. From one young player to another, 
brings me on to Jaden Brav. Now, he's a target, apparently, for Red Bull Leipzig over in the Bundesliga in Germany, and apparently scouts are at the Manchester City's um, academy game against Aston Villa to keep an eye on his development. Now, apparently, Manchester City um, don't want to sell Jaden Brav. We offered him a contract quite recently. He's uh, signed until 2023, so he's got quite a few years left on his current contract, so they're going to have to pay a fee if they want to sign him. Braff wants first team football. Whether Manchester City will offer him first team football or not as of the current end of this season uh, remains to be seen as to where City's uh, going to target with Braff. But it'll be quite interesting. I'm not too sure if he'll be promoted or not. I would like to see more young players promoted at Manchester City. So it's interesting. We do have on our hands though a similar situation to what we had with Jaden Sancho. We could then promote Braff, but Braff knows that if um, Leipzig offer him first team football and he's going to get regular playing time which is something that can be offered in the Bundesliga by the way by quite a few clubs decent clubs too including including Leipzig that it turns the heads and the players end up going there instead we run the risk of losing some of our top quality best young players uh, to a situation that's happened with Sancho so it'll be interesting to see what the club have learnt from this transfer of course City would have to accept a fee uh, Jaden Sancho didn't sign a professional deal, he wasn't a professional footballer, so could leave on his own free will. City did offer him the contract, he turned it down and signed for Dortmund instead. Uh, this situation is similar but not the same and that won't be happening, but City would have to agree a fee for him to leave. So I'd like to know if Jaden Braff wanted to leave, what would you value him at? Let me know in the comments below. This has come from a source at the Daily Mail, quite reliable too with information with regards to Manchester City, so we'll keep an eye on that. Now lastly, quick story, this one in the contract. Quite heartwarming really. Comes in the form of contract news with Leroy Sane. Now Leroy Sane apparently is extremely happy that Manchester City have been very supportive of him during his rehabilitation period that he's had uh, getting over his injury. City have left the contract offer on the table should Leroy Sane want to sign that, which is a pay rise. Not as big a pay rise as what he'd been offered apparently at Bayern Munich, but he has been offered a pay rise. Leroy Sane is thought to want to be one of the highest earners at Manchester City, matching the wage of players like Raheem. Sterling and Sergio Aguero which I can understand the case for him arguing that he should be on that level I'd like to know it's something to be debated but um, I can understand why he's asking for that and it has been offered by other clubs so he has something in his favour but apparently he's really happy that the contract offer has been left there for him and that the club's been really supportive of him whilst he's got over his injury they haven't just forgotten about him and how what happened in the summer uh, the club has just remained professional and Lira Sane uh, seems to appreciate that so Will he consider that and maybe sign a new deal, see see what happens there? I mean, Leroy Sane might come back, have an outstanding end to the season. City might go back to the negotiation tables, offer him a little bit more, uh, give him some, well, give in to a little bit more of Leroy Sane's demands and might meet City halfway. I do not know, but it is nice to see that it's been reported that uh, Leroy Sane is happy with how things have been handled. So we'll wait and see. We might have Leroy Sane on a new contract. That'd be absolutely fantastic. So, yeah. Uh, nice bit of positive news really to end the video so there's been the video hope you enjoyed the video leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe if you're new around here press that red button press the bell and put your push notifications on social media links you can find in the description below and popping up on screen and don't forget also you can find my email in the description below for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries so i'll see you all again for the next video we've got a preview coming up for the crystal palace game for you to stay tuned for as well as daily manchester city transfer for updates. So I'll see you then. So it's been JSGC. Hope we'll have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace. Ciao for now.